Hey guys, this is Mel, and I'm back to talk about Legacies, episode 313, titled One Day You Will Understand, which premiered Thursday, May 20th, 2021 on The CW. I'm recording uh, after midnight, so technically right now the West Coast is watching it, um, so it's been at least three hours for me. So, huge spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the episode already, please go do so first, and then come back and see what they say about the, ep about the episode. My other video miners are up on screen, so take a moment to remind yourselves of those. Thank you so much to quick YouTube shoutouts to Maria Lira in the games 123 and Golden Angel 15 for their comments on my 312 video. And just thank you in general for everybody who watched the video, whether it's 312 or any of the previous ones beforehand. Thank you so much for just tuning in to see what I have to say. Um, it It's kind of therapeutic to be able to talk this out in a sense in these videos and to the ha and then it's a bonus when I get comments to kind of further the engagement of me like either getting questions um answered that I've asked or having questions for me to give as well if I can so it's always great in um, exchange between the two so I do appreciate you guys continuing it forward with me um I'm gonna try to do this in 20 minutes um but let's see where it goes with what happened in this episode so but first before I actually start into what happened in this episode it's, I wanted to bring something up again that came in 312, and I guess kind of, it's tied into this episode because it did appear in the recap portion of the episode, uh, but uh, I'm wondering if the, the, you know how in the episode when Cleo and Hope are making the clay bust of Landon during the whole art auction leprechaun episode, and we as the audience see the clay glowing a yellow. I guess now that we know Cleo and how her eyes tend to glow yellow, both when she was inspirational and in the one episode, and then when uh, Loptus Landon's eyes turned yellow as well, I'm wondering if that glow of the yellow was meant to be the very first clue. And if that was the case, I'm wondering if that is something that either Hope also saw happening or if it was just Cleo who saw it happening or was it just for us as the audience to know that something was happening uh, with the with the the clay itself uh but it didn't really click until after i edited my uh 312 recap video um about it so i thought i'd mention it now that that probably should have been the first clue but i know i did have question whether or not they saw it or if they meant it if something were meant to come of it proving that no and then later proving actually yes so that's just something i wanted to talk about uh but in this episode in particular with the episode quote with one day you won't understand this was actually said in the flashback of uh by cleo's grandmother to a very young cleo um so yeah i think that's more predominantly where it was i don't know where else it i don't think it was said by any other character i think it was just between the grandmother and uh, cleo uh, but the timeline, I believe it's shortly after the events of 312, maybe the next day, if if it's not a few hours afterwards. Uh, just from the way that everyone was acting, it seemed like it was a brand new day. Um, I'm assuming so because also Hope was healed from her injuries with Cleo stabbing her in the stomach. Landon got a haircut, but it doesn't really take him that long to give himself a haircut. So I, I'm assuming it's the next day after the events. Uh, but... Uh, Hope did say in this episode that it's been a few weeks since the events of 318, and that is when um, she tried to open up the, uh, a portal into the prison world, and we got that black magic uh, veiny action going on with Hope and the twins, and then that's when Landon supposedly returned, but then that's, so it's, Hope, the reason I'm saying is because Hope says that that was a few weeks ago, and that's when the actual Landon actually got back, so it kind of sparked the oh he didn't just return to them once he came back he he kept his distance kind of a thing but when it came to the flashback we kind of go into 1464 ad if i captured that correctly and it was meant to be in the area which we now currently call nigeria it wasn't called that back then though uh the episode reminder i guess i'm going to say is the fact that it's cleo's past that we get to go into a little bit more and then how she got on malivar's radar essentially and I guess the feature creature I would say is kind of Malivore, both in the past and I guess kind of in the present. Um, but it's just because I don't want to label Cleo as the creature. It's just more of us finding out answers about it. Uh, but the episode breakdowns or the storylines, I will give you three different ones that I picked up on. First one obviously being Cleo's past. Second one being Landon's adjustment uh, to being back with people again. And then the third one um, is the school tour part two. So the first storyline, like I said, 
is where Cleo shares her story, or I guess her life stories are what led her to the school uh, or to her actions of trying to kill Hope. Um, she tells us with Caleb, and then when Alaric thinks that Caleb is kind of um, kind of more swayed because of his feelings for her, he brings in Josie as like an impartial um, uh, observer, and then he goes in himself because there's one answer he really wanted to know, and that was why she was targeting Hope. Um, so initially, you find out that her uh, Cle Cleo's initial deal with Malivore and that um, and the events of how many many years in his kind of imprisonment type thing uh she created a new vessel for him but was able to control it so she was able to kind of imprison him and but while she escaped uh but she is the one that gave him the idea of needing a, a vessel to stop his starvation because the reason why he took her from the sound of it was that because she's a muse and she can create things she would constantly create these golem creatures so that malivar consumed them because he was so hungry i think that's from my understanding Next part she told us was how she escaped from the artifact when Hope opened it. And the artifact can only be hope opened by the one who was meant to uh, defeat Malivore. Um, and then from there, uh, she observed the school. Cleo observed the school. She created the leprechaun. She created the fairy man out of mud. And then she created a Landon um, to kind of get her way into uh, the school. She created a Landon because... It was the only way to stop Hope from trying to open up the prison world, which is what Cleo didn't want happening because she didn't want to risk Malvor coming back. And then when the Gremlin and the Banshee uh, appeared, they were sent by Malvor because he found out where she was and that she was alive. And then we get into how um, Cleo was the one that started the electrical fire that destroyed the parchment that they found at the Triad. Uh, a lot of people were theorizing about that, so it was great to see it actually play out in her explanation. She's trying to do everything she can to get them to stay away from Malivore in the prison world, but then when that didn't seem to be the case, the only next option was to trigger Hope to being a full tribrid, which is what led to her actions against her, which is what Alark really wanted to know because he couldn't tell if she was their villain or not based on her motives. And it just seemed like she did what she needed to do. And yeah, and Alark also said that he was not willing to uh, sacrifice Hope's um, human life just to stop a monster because she's lost so much already. Um, so we'll put it at that. Second storyline, while this is all happening, it's kind of mixed into it. You get Landon's adjustment. So since it's been a very long time since he's been around people. He's on edge to the point where he is brought into a fist fight with an old bully, a bully from his at Mystic Falls High when Hope goes in to retrieve the artifact from Dorian. Landon asks to stay outside because he has bad memories of the Prison World's version of the high school as well. Uh, but while they're heading back to the school, the, the couple encounter Malivore, who wanted the artifact. Um, so they fight him separately before they join together to fight him. And in return, Landon sliced open Malivore's head, but it got the box destroyed. Uh, I'm not sure if they knew that that was Malivore, but it was in the form of his body that we see in the flashbacks. Uh, but as part of Landon's adjustment, he does break up with Hope by the end of it, saying that they're doomed to destroy each other, as um, she is the loophole to destroy Malivore while he's the son of Malivore. And then he leaves the school. And we'll talk about that later. Uh, the third storyline with the school tour is actually Josie brings Finch over for breakfast and a tour of the school. Uh, kind of also to return the favor since Finch was her tour guide at Mystic Falls High School. But Josie believes that... Um, them both being at the boarding school would be beneficial for them both because they are supernatural beings and they're safest at the school with people who understand them. Uh, so when Josie gets pulled away to go help Alaric, Finch uh, stays with Jed in the pack and she spends some time with them and ultimately decides that she wants to transfer to the school and she also wants to be called Josie's girlfriend because previously uh, Josie would slip up on like what to call her, what to label the thing, uh, their relationship at that point because it was very early stages. So the last scene of the episode shows Cleo and Landon who have both decided to leave the school, meeting at the bus stop, and then deciding to team up together to find a way to kill Malivore. Uh, when we go to characters, Cleo, we find out, was given the choice to stay at the school by Alaric, but she decided to leave. We found out in the last episode why she did so. Uh, we also find out that Leonardo da Vinci was her first and only love, and it was short-lived before um, they created the, the artifact and and put Cleo inside of it as a way to hide her from Malivore, I believe, from my understanding. 
uh, from Caleb, he is left not knowing if Cleo's feelings for him were real or not, or if it's just part of her trade to get into the good graces of the school and the 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 trust of the, the other students. Uh, for Josie, uh, she realized that her treatment at the school is very different from other students because she is the head, headmaster's daughter, um, especially when she was comparing a large treatment of Josie and her actions with Dark Magic versus how he was treating Cleo's act current actions um, against them, where it was out of survival. So Josie has a bit of a uh, opened eyes kind of a moment there. And then with Landon, we do find out that he stayed away, and Hope find out, sadly, that Landon stayed away from the school to find out what when he returned from the prison world. He stayed away to find out what Malivore wanted and why he wanted Cleo. And because he saw Hope happy with the perfect version of Landon that Luctus Landon provided. And when he brought that up, he mentioned Hope's decision previously when she let Landon be with Josie uh, when she first returned from Malivore. Um, so there's that. I mean, it's kind of slightly different because with Hope's decision, Landon didn't remember who she was. And yet in uh, in Landon's situation, Hope did. But she was like wrongly with the person she thought was her boyfriend, yet her real boyfriend didn't go back to her kind of thing. So slightly similar situation, not quite. Uh, but for Tibbets, though, we don't get any Lizzie, MG, Ethan, or Wade in this episode. Lizzie is supposed, supposedly still off at that uh that retreat that she was going to go to um, get a handle on her self-control. MG, we last saw, just compelled Ethan to forget about their friendship and the supernatural secret. And then Wade, we haven't seen for two episodes. Now, with moving on to most shocking moment of the episode, I would say I'm kind of surprised that it was Cleo that gave Malivore the idea of taking on a vessel. I'm wondering if that is what led him to maybe uh, wanting to sire a child or have a, a, his own bloodline of sorts, but I was kind of surprised it was Cleo um, idea of creating him a new body is what really started it all. That, that, that's, that was a shock. Um, but moving on to top three favorite moments. Um, I will have to say it was very interesting to experience the flashbacks because this time it's not just reliving the flashbacks. We got to see Josie and Caleb kind of stepping into the flashback themselves and really getting immersed in the memory. So I thought that was pretty cool and it was definitely a different way of experiencing it. It's kind of like uh, Harry Potter going into the Pensieve kind of. So that was pretty cool. Um, for my other favorite was just um, Hope and Landon teaming up in their fight against Malivore, especially when there's like, you go high, I go low kind of a thing. And also just both of them seeing the fight again, like this time Landon actually holding his own as best as he can when beforehand he never could because Hope would kind of have to take the reins on it. So it's really interesting to see them um, fighting alongside each other this time. Um, and another favorite I had was, um, one I just thought of was actually, a uh, Alaric's, uh, summarization of Hope's life and how even, like, even though he knew deep down that Hope triggering her vampirism is the thing that they needed to, what they would need to be a step closer to killing Malivore, he's not really to risk that because she's lost so much of her life already and he didn't want to take away her human life as well, even though she would live out her life as a tribrid. Um, so I really like that he is still keeping that in mind. So I do appreciate that. And then uh, last favorite I had was just Finch bonding with the wolves. I know it was kind of implied off, off screen that that's what they were doing. But I do like the idea that she didn't just walk off to be alone. She actually stayed with Jed and the other wolves to kind of get to know them. And she ended up getting into uh, a friendly sp uh, sparring match with them. I just wish we kind of see it, but I get why we wouldn't because that wasn't where the focus of the episode was. Uh, now, moving on to top three peeves, the only peeve I have was the fact that Landon broke up with Hope. I mean, I get why, because he made valid points. They're both doomed to fail, unless they figure out a way to not be allergic to each other. Um, it's just kind of, it's just a peeve, because it's very sad that this happened for Hope, just after hearing the recap that Alaric gave, gave about how much she has lost, and then to see Hope's reaction to that breakup was just very like she has lost so much and just when she thinks she just got him back she doesn't really get him back kind of a thing so that was just a peeve there because like it just seems like she can't truly be happy for long which sucks but let's move on to random questions very quickly uh first one why did malivore want the artifact box if that was the box that was created to hide cleo from him 
or did he plan to use it against Cleo? Second question, do Hope and Landon know that they fought Malivore, or do they think it's just another one of his creatures? Third, why was Malivore in the same form from Cleo's memories? Shouldn't he be in the usual mud version that we've been seeing him in the present day? Because the last time Cleo saw Malivore in that form must have been centuries ago. So then wouldn't, if he still has that form to this day, shouldn't every other time we saw Malivore be that version of him and not that weird clumpy mud version of him that we've seen since the beginning of the series? Um, so that's a question there. Um, but otherwise... Oh, another question. Do you think now that Cleo and Landon are teaming up to go and try to find a way to kill Malivore, do you think we're going to follow them on this adventure? Or is it going to be one of those, like, they're going to be gone for a few episodes and then we tune in back with them? Or are we going to actually go along with them on this journey? Um, and kind of, like, cut back and forth, too. Um, or is it going to be... Yeah, that's going to be the question there. Uh, but let's move on to predictions very quickly. Based off the promo for 314, uh, it seems like it's not going to return into June 10th. So that's going to be two weeks of reruns and then we're back with a new episode. And it looks like Josie turns to Hope for help when she believes that Lizzie is in trouble at that retreat, that at that witch retreat she said she was going to. It looks like some cultish behavior is happening and they seem to get their hands on Hope. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, uh, because it's um, more than two weeks out. At the mo time of this recording, there is no synopsis available for the episode. If it is by the time I'm editing it, just pause the video on screen to read what's been typed up for you. Uh, so there's that. But uh, with the cult getting their hands on Hope, I'm wondering if it's because like she's post-breakup mindset. She's a little bit more vulnerable than usual. Her walls may not be down. Maybe that's one way they got into her. And then I'm wondering how they got to Lizzie, too. I wonder if they're witches, even. That would be a question there. But um, otherwise, that is pretty much for the It episode. Um, on other news, I did find out um, on the Wiki Forum page um, that it was announced yesterday, so technically May 19th or two days ago, depending if you want to be technical. It was announced that Julie Pluck is now be her, being attached to a new television series uh, for the Vampire Academy. Uh, they did a movie a while ago, um, so now they're going to turn the books into an actual TV shows. Um, I actually can't wait to to see how that happens. I mean, uh, the movie had its moments. I haven't read the books. The movie's had its moments, but I did like the, I, the, the mythology behind it, and I did want to see more of how that happens, but I'm more visual than, like, verbal. Or I know, no, I'm more visual than, like, literary, which is kind of odd considering I trained to be a screenwriter, but it makes sense to me. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see how that new series comes out. But I'm wondering if that's going to change how Legacy moves forward or not. Either way, I'm excited to see what the next episode of Legacy has in store. But what did you guys think of this episode? What did you guys like about it? What do you think will happen next? Let me know in the comments down below what you think about all that. Also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and check my other videos if you haven't done so already. If you want, check out my Tumblr page. Link for that is down below. I read blog promos, web clips, quotes, gifs, and Nazis news, all that good stuff. All found in one place. Go check that out. Um, I should make a note of updating that soon. I've just been in a swamp with a few things that I've been trying to get my hands on. Um, so I'll make a note of that. Um, but yeah, WordPress, online, everything posted there. A little more organized, more detailed. Same thing as well. Um, but yeah, guys, otherwise, uh, it's going to be a two-week break before we come back with 314. Um, I hope you come back to see what they say about that episode. We're actually very, there's only 20 episodes this season, so we are coming close to the season finale. It's fast approaching, um, if you can believe it. Um, so I hope you come back and see what, what the rest of this journey holds for us. But until then, guys, this is Mel. Wish you all a great day, great week wherever you are. And I'm actually so happy I beat the 20-minute timer I have for myself. Oh, that, it. It's been a while since that, so I'm going to end it there. Take care, guys. Be safe. Um, have a good one. Bye.